Now we're going to talk about arrays of objects. Now at the end of the last lesson we talked about or we showed uh, strings, an array of strings. And because strings are objects, we know we can have an array of objects. So we can create an array of objects that are instances of classes that we have written. In previous examples, we used a class called Bank Account, where we set uh, the beginning balance to something we could add with, we could have withdrawals, we could have deposits, things like that. Um, so let's use that same class, Bank Account. So if you look on the screen right here, Accounts is a variable name. It's an array of bank accounts. Usually here we'd say integer or double or whatever. But here we're going to say bank account. So I'm creating an array. And the array is called accounts. And they're going to be of type bank accounts. Bank account objects. And it looks like there's going to be five bank account objects. So the index is going to go from 0 to 4. So an array of bank account objects could be created to represent all of the bank accounts owned by a single person. So each element in this array is a reference variable. These are all going to be reference variables referencing the address where the object is located in memory. Recall that every time I create an object, it takes up space in my memory. Um, depending on how many different um, attributes I have or data elements I have, they all take place in memory somewhere. And they're all separate from each other. Even though I'm creating it from the same class, these are different objects created from the same class, and so they're located in different places in memory. So all these accounts zero, when I want to say elements, are going to be reference variables. They're going to be pointing to the object. But since each element of the array is not initialized yet, all we have done is said there's going to be an accounts array of bank account types, they haven't been initialized to where these objects are going to be, they're all set to null. So the, this indicates that the array elements do not yet reference the objects. Each element of that the array will reference must be created individually. So by just doing this one step, bank accounts, brackets, accounts equals new bank account, brackets five, semicolon, that says, okay, I'm creating an accounts array of type bank account objects, and there are going to be five of them, but I have not created the objects yet, so the references are set to null. To set uh, or to create the objects for each element, I use a loop, and here it is here. For integer i equals 0, i is less than accounts.length, which would be 5, i++, plus plus, so i is equal to 0. Accounts 0 equals new bank account. And that's going to create a bank account and point to it. i is incremented by 1, okay. Accounts 1 is still less than 5. Accounts 1, new bank account. I created a second object. Boom, that starts pointing to the second object. Increment it to uh, 2. 2 is less than 5. Accounts 2 equals new bank account. Boom, I created my third object. Increment it to 4. I'm sorry, to 3. 3 is less than 5. Accounts 3 equals new bank account. Boom, I created my fourth object. And finally, Increment it to 4. 4 is less than 5. Accounts 4 equals new bank account. Boom, I created my fifth object. Now all the um, elements in the array point, they reference where these objects are stored. 
Let's look at that using this object array. So here's object array, and here's the bank account. And it has balance, count balance. And we have a constructor where we set the balance to zero, but we also have another constructor. So the constructors are overloaded. And again, you can tell this is a constructor because it's the same name as the class. There's no return type. This one, nothing's passed. This one, a start balance is passed. And this start balance, balance is set, set equal to start balance. So I could use either. So it's overloaded as far as constructor goes. Here's another overload. I can use a string instead of a double. And then I just parse the string and uh, create it as double and store it in balance. So I've got three constructors. So constructor's overloaded. Here's deposit. Again, deposit is overloaded. Amount can be either double pass to it or string, where I parse it here and put it, add it to the balance. So my deposit, I take the balance, add the amount to it, and put it back into balance. Withdrawal. Basically, I have two withdrawals too, a double and a string. Again, I take the amount, if it's a double, subtract it from the balance, put it back in the balance. If it's a string, I parse it, then subtract it from the balance, parse it into a double, subtract it from the balance, and then put it back into the balance. Here is a set balance. All it does is set the balance to some variable if I want to use that. I can use it as a double or a string also. And here's get balance. It just returns the balance. So that's my bank account. So here is my main to test it out. And I'm going to say, okay, we've got three accounts. I'm going to set that as a, a constant. Accounts, again, is my array name. So I've typed bank account, and it's going to make three of them. And I'll have uh, indexes 0, 1, and 2. Then I'm going to call a method called create accounts, and I'm going to pass the array. And then when that's done, I'm going to call uh, print to a display, and I'll say here are the balances for each account. And then I'm going to go through the accounts for index equals zero, index plus the account length, which is three, index plus plus, account, and this is gonna say one because humans don't like to see account zero, but its index is still zero, and it's gonna get accounts zero get balance, and it's gonna put it out. And then it's gonna increment the index to one. One, it's gonna say account two, and it's going to get the index for account one, get balance. Then it's going to increment it to two. Two is still less than three. So I'm going to say account three, and then it's going to get count subscript two, get balance. And then it's going to increment it to three. Three is not less than three, and it's going to leave. So this will print out the balance after we've set up all three accounts. So here we have the create accounts where we passed our array. Up here we call it the array accounts. Here we're just going to call it array. And we say it's of type bank account. Just like we would if it was an integer, just like we would with a double, we have to tell what type it is. It's a type bank account. And we put our little brackets here. And we put a local variable here called balance. We get a keyboard object so we can read from the keyboard and then we create the accounts. So account again for integer index is equals zero, index less than three, index plus plus. Entered the balance for account, and it's gonna say you know one, and it's gonna read it in. And then we're going to say, okay, array zero equals new, and we're gonna create the object, given a balance. And so that means since we're given a balance, we're going to be doing, and the balance is going to be double, we're going to be using this constructor right here, so it's going to be setting the balance. And then we'll go with the same thing for the second account, and then the third account. And we'll store them all in memory, 
we'll have three objects with different balances that this array points to. So when we come back here, we can print them out. So let's run through it. Enter the balance for account one, I'm going to say is $100. Boom. Enter the balance for account two, I'm going to say is $200. Boom. Enter the balance for account three, I'm going to say is $300. Boom. And here are the balances for each account. Count one, 100, two, 200, three, 300. So we see it works. And so that is an array of objects. This is a very important concept, so I want to make sure you get get it down really well. This is a very, very important concept. We can have an array of objects. And here we're just showing one data point. But I could have an array, I could have an object that has strings in it and integers in it and doubles in it. And since it's an array of objects, it's still just a single type of array of whatever object I am, but it can have uh, integers and doubles and strings associated with that object. It could have another array associated with that object. We could have, we could do a lot of powerful things with an array of objects. So again, if you have any questions, email me or put it on the discussion board. Thank you.